G'day, here we are today doing Australia's top 20 weirdest corporate structures you've never heard of. Just like the stuff on the YouTube, we're doing it, but we're doing it with Australian billionaires and their companies. We've got an example here for you. I've got Luke, Luke Stacey here, who's done the research. He's done, he's done with Stephanie Tran, the two young guns have done 5,000 corporate searches and searches of the AEC database to find out how much Australia's billionaires have been donating to the Liberal National Labor Parties and to find out what the blazes is going on with their corporate structures. Why? Why can't we just have one company where the money goes in and the profits go out in dividends and the interest goes out to the banks? Why can't it be that simple? During our time we've been searching these companies, we found dozens, hundreds of associated companies. Why does one person or one family empire, be it the Stokes or the Pratts or the Trigger Boffs or the, or the, uh, the Ryan Hearts, not so much, Gina, hers is more simple than most, the Lowys, why do we have to have all these companies and secret partnerships and trusts and trustees and companies acting for trustees for companies? Why have we got this? This is the simple diagram of the Lowy family structure. This is the simple diagram. On one side, you've got six structures here. And on the other side, you've got, how many are there, Luke? About 20? Oh, yeah, over 20. Over side, 20 yeah. on this side. We've only just, this is the basic diagram, not the, com not the, the complicated one. Um, why? What is the reason for all these, this Byzantine, this labyrinthine maze of companies? Why do billionaires have all these things, all these, all these strange companies? Well, we're going to establish that today, that these are conduits. They have them as conduits to get money from one place to the other place, to change the shape of the money. They might change it from a dividend, which comes into one company, which comes out as an interest payment to another company. They may have it as a management fee in one box, coming out as a dividend in another box, or an, an IP, a royalty payment, coming out and going to, coming out as a, as a service fee or a management fee to another company. We have a very strange uh, one here, uh, Luke, if you could explain it, uh, the, we found a company paying a $20 million management fee um, to some of the associates of the Lowy family empire. Could you give us a quick explanation? Yeah, so essentially they're, they're moving this money from one wing of their empire over to this other side. And the management fees are coming from, like you were saying, these conduits, which a lot of these LFG companies, which is the Lowy family group, that's, that's their sole purpose. So when we look at LFG 12, for 2019, it had an income of $2,000, yet there was a management fee of five and a half million. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. So revenue or income of $2,000 and a management fee of five and a half million dollars. Yeah. That's a heck of a lot of management for a tiny little company. So what we're exactly. looking at here, we're looking at a subterfuge effectively, which, which wealthy uh, people and their tax accountants and their tax lawyers set up mm -hmm. for a particular purpose. And we haven't worked out what that purpose is yet, but no. we've worked out that they're shifting money through a maze of companies and it's ending up in associates of the Lowy uh, family, Stephen, David and Peter. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing illegal about this, of course. This is just what people do. And, and we assume that at the end of the day, uh, going forward, uh, it will result in some kind of benefit, maybe the creation of a tax loss so that the directors and the shareholders pay less tax. If you consider that the corporate tax rate is 30%, that means that if you are paying the proper amount of tax, you will be paying 30 cents in every dollar. So if you can get that down to 10 cents or zero cents in the dollar, then you are saving a lot of money. In this case, with revenue, um, you know, coming out of the Westfield shopping centre empire and other investments, you would think that the difference between a structure, a complicated and effective structure and having no structure at all may be 
over many years, billions of dollars, perhaps even hundreds of millions of dollars in a year that can be saved with these tricky, clandestine, secretive structures. Now, down the bottom here, we have two entities. These are the original uh, companies uh, set up by Frank Lowy, 1961 Franley, family company, and Cordera. Now, these companies enjoy an exemption. It's called the grandfathering exemption. And that is an exemption from having to reveal any financial statements. Unlike the rest of Australia, even the multinationals, even Exxon, the big tax cheat Exxon, they don't have, they've got to produce, you might have to pay 40 bucks a pop, but they have to produce financial statements. But if you are on this, this privileged list of 1,119 companies, and the list includes Stokes, Lowy, used to include Murdoch and Packer, um, got we've got Triggerboff, we've got uh, we, we got Pratt, we've got uh, Reinhardt. Uh, she bought her way in, actually. Uh, she wasn't originally on the grandfathered list. But the problem with this is it's not a level playing field. So these people that enjoy this 25-year-old exemption, which was meant to be temporary, enjoy having these dark companies like Franley and Cordera. Now tell me, Luke, what, do you, what have you found out the relationship is, explain it in simple terms, between the dark companies and the shifting of money to another part of the empire? Well, see, this is the problem. Because they're dark, we can't see their accounts and we can't determine what their sole purpose is with moving this money around. So you would have to assume when there's five and a half million dollars coming out of this company on an income of 2000 where is this money coming from? It's coming from one of these subsidiaries. But we can't make, we can't make a, an exact statement on that because we can't access any information on these companies thanks to that exemption. So essentially it's just they're using this side of the, the company to either move their money over to this wing, which is going to Frank's three sons, or if it was to move further up on this side, it will end up in the Franley Family Trust which is essentially another dark entity once money is moved into a trust. Because it's a trust and yep. it doesn't have to reveal accounts. That's right. And so the money's coming in here from, you know, the perhaps, uh, perhaps the Westfield and other sources. It goes up into these entities here and it might keep on going up to the family trust or it may go off here down to Manafort. That's right. You've had a look at the accounts of Manafort? There's, uh, I don't think it's a large proprietary company. Right, okay, so yeah. we can't see those either. Yeah. So, so the money's gone up here to LFG12 and gone out over to this side of the empire and made its way, presumably, but we don't know, no, we don't. presumably up into the personal family companies of yeah. the three Lowy boys. Because again, here we've just got more conduits. Have we missed anything here? I'm sure we've missed a lot, but have we missed anything reasonably big? Well, I mean... In this conversation, LFG is the company in question, but also we, we can grab the accounts for LFG too, and they've shown that in 2019, they paid loans to directors, which is the Lowy family, so to themselves, $55 million. So loans to directors mm -hmm. out of this entity of yeah. 50... 55 million. And well, well, there you go. And of course, you can structure a loan, of course, we're not saying this is the case, that never has to be paid back. That'd be like, if anyone out there would like to give us a loan that never needs to be paid back, uh, you can contact us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, or by email. Uh, so there we have it. That is another little thing. And no doubt there are many more little things, but $50 million in loans. And where's that is, is this, in one, is this in one year that we've seen? This is yeah, in one year's account. for 2019. For 2019, and the, and the loan agreement was struck in that year? Yeah, yeah. 2019, 50 million dollars in loans. So the purpose of this, and this is one example. We're not singling the lowies out here. It's just an interesting one. Uh, it's interesting because it's interesting to see a company paying 20 million dollars in management fees on 10 thousand dollars in income, or numbers of that magnitude. But what the purpose of these many, these myriad entities is, is to change the shape of money. So it comes in as a dividend, goes out as an interest payment, comes in as an IP payment, goes out as a, as a management fee. It, you know, various 
forms of those different kind of solutions. Yeah, because this management fee is generating them a tax benefit of one and a half million dollars. How do we know that? Because of the, on their income, loss before tax, tax benefit. Oh, so, okay. so this has, we've established that yeah. there's a tax benefit here uh, which has been gained by this by this structure. Yeah, by these management fees being moved around. Terrific. And this, of course, happens on the global scale as well. Uh, there was a, a celebrated leak from a bank, I think, in Liechtenstein many years ago, and the Lowys were involved in that as well, where the money had travelled from Westfield, America, to Europe, I think it was Liechtenstein, then out to Israel, uh, and uh, never came to Australia. But the purpose of going to different jurisdictions is that with each, each jurisdiction, the treatment of, let's say, interest on debt, dividends on equity, or royalties on IP, on intellectual property, is different. So it may be different in the Netherlands to what it is in Liechtenstein. Different again, of course, in Ireland as to what it is in the Bahamas, or Bermuda and the Caymans to what it is in Delaware, and of course, Australia. And so that's what tax lawyers do. They work out the best way to change the shape of money, to get money from one place to the other place, to the other people, without paying too much or any, if possible, tax on it, changing the shape of money.